fan I won't look back ever again yeah. If you ain't see me activated You better hope that you never see me agitated I think about my actions, plan them out, evaluate it That's how I end up on the top, man, I'm calculated My mind's a weapon, my body is the engine I'm never second guessing, I just do what I was destined Cause I feel I got the blessing, persistence and obsession That's how you keep progressing, I already learned that lesson, yeah I'm changing who I am I'm making a new plan Rearranging my life and I won't look back ever again You can't stop what's moving You can't stop what's moving I'm changing my life and I won't look back ever again No fear, see clear, you deserve to be great I know it feels like things get in your way Push through those walls and the others will fall Sit up, stand tall, you What's going on, everybody? Sorry about that, but we're going to get ready to get this started in just a bit. And uh, we're going to get ready to talk some rumors because we know the rumor mill is spinning right now uh, as it involves uh, the Tennessee Titans a little bit as far as um, some moves that could be made and also some moves lack thereof that have not been made yet. And so we're definitely going to uh, talk about that. And uh, we're definitely going to talk about some rumors going on in talks about Lamar Jackson. Uh, definitely started to talk about, um, you know, we're starting to talking about um, um, DeAndre Hopkins as well. Uh, so those are just a couple of um, things that we're going to get into uh, and everything. So we're definitely going to get started with that. Make sure y'all share this show out uh, on, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead, hit that, uh, go ahead and hit that like button. And uh, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring that bell and hit all. So that way you get all the notifications for when I do go live. And um, if you're watching, uh, if you happen to be watching on Twitter, uh, definitely retweet the show uh, as well. I'm going to make sure we can put it to where uh, it'll show uh, on some pages on Facebook uh, also. And um, and then we're going to get ready to get started uh, in just a moment. So, again, we're going to talk about Lamar Jackson. Uh, could he possibly come to Tennessee? Or what about DeAndre Hopkins? Uh, of course, the Jets made a trade earlier today as well. And we're going to talk about um, – the newest addition to the Tennessee Titans defensive backfield. Um, and as somebody has already mentioned, uh, yeah, there was a very, very funny uh, signing that I'm just, I'm ready to have some fun and crap all over uh, on. So 
you know, we're definitely going to talk about the fact that, um, if, you know, a former Tennessee Titan has now signed elsewhere for a ridiculous amount of time. And so we're going to get ready to get started in just a few moments. And uh, I hope everybody go ahead and share the show. Uh, uh, go ahead and, um, you know, make sure you share the show out. And, um, and then we're going to get ready to get started in less than 60 seconds. Here we go. Good evening, good evening, good evening, Titan Nation. How's everybody doing? Welcome into TNT tonight. I'm your host, Chris, a.k.a. Blue Enforcer, a.k.a. The Truth. And we're going to have a very fun episode for you uh, on this evening. Again, uh, definitely make sure y'all uh, share this show out. Uh, definitely share this show. Uh, whether you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and... Uh, Hit that share button. Uh, go ahead and share that show out, whether it be out to Facebook, to Twitter. Um, you can take a screenshot, send it to Instagram. Go ahead and um, and definitely share this show out. Also, make sure you go ahead and smash that like button. Go ahead and smash that like button. I want every. I would like it if everybody could please, whoever is watching tonight, just hit that like button for me. Uh, while you're watching, and then um, and that'll help me as well uh, as far as the algorithm, as they like to call it. So you definitely be helping me out with that. And then also, if you're new to the channel, if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and uh, ring that bell and uh, hit all for notifications. So that way, anytime I go live, you'll know. You'll get a notification knowing that I'm going to be going live, and then that way you'll be in the know. You'll know when I'm going live and things like that. And then also, this episode, after I get off the air, will be up on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcast, and uh, Apple Podcast, wherever you get your podcast um Wherever you get your podcast from, it will be there. So uh, definitely, if you want to, you know, if you miss some of the show or if you got to, you know, duck out a little early, it'll be there for you to go back and listen to the audio of that. I'll be uh, putting that on there uh, as soon as I get off the air tonight. So definitely stay tuned on that. But also make sure you follow the channels, whether it be on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram on Facebook at TNT Enforcer, the TNT Enforcers page uh, on Twitter at Titans underscore N underscore truth. And then on Instagram, uh, I'm sorry, at Titans underscore N underscore truth is Instagram at TNT Blue Enforcer is Twitter. So definitely make sure you follow me on those channels as well. Um, again, I am trying to put out stuff. Um, as I get in whenever, whenever I can, you know, I, I, I do be busy sometimes, but I do try to post as much as possible, uh, when I can. So, uh, I thank everybody for tuning in tonight, uh, for the show and, uh, let's go ahead and get started, uh, with, um, with one thing that did happen. Of course, last week we talked about, um, the new guys that have, uh, joined the team. They did have a press conference yesterday, and I did definitely like uh, the press conference. You heard 
from uh, Andre Dillard, uh, who uh, could end up being the new left tackle. He wants to be the left tackle. Uh, you definitely heard from Arden Key, who I think is going to be a character and probably had felt disrespected by the Jags, and he he's playing with a chip on his shoulder. So I, I definitely like that. Uh, Aziz Al-Shahir, uh, the linebacker from the 49ers who Rand Carthon is familiar with. Also, Daniel Brunskill, who dressed similar to a Ben Jones uh, in a way. Uh, he looks like he could be penciled in at right guard. He could also play some center as well. And then, of course, um, the last uh, pickup, uh, Luke Gifford. Uh, as well on special teams uh, was definitely there as well. And then, of course, we found out Nick Westbrook Aquina, they brought him back on a small one-year deal. Uh, they did pick up the uh, small option on Naquan Jones as well. And so, um, you know, um, they definitely did that. But Cody Hollister is uh, still there. Um you know, Cody Hollister is still a free agent. And so, um, you know, that's something that, you know, is still, um, you know, that's something that still needs to be addressed is um, the wide receiver position, which we will definitely get to in just a bit. But also... Uh, the Titans did make another signing. They did sign. Um, they did sign uh, Sean Murphy Bunting, former cornerback from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, got him for uh, one year. I believe it's five million uh, on the year. And don't worry, Derek. I'm gonna definitely save that. I appreciate the super chat. I'm definitely gonna save that. But. Um, you know, Sean Murphy Bunting, uh, a lot of people seem to like that pick for the Tennessee Titans. I like the pick, uh, pick up as well. So I think this could definitely help. Um, this could help strengthen, um, strengthen the uh, cornerback room. And we definitely need that with uh, whatever's going on. I mean, he's six foot, 195 pounds. He could definitely slide in and start opposite Christian Fulton. And then you can move, um, you can move um, Roger McCreary inside along with Elijah Molden. So I definitely like the pickup very much. So uh, I definitely want to get y'all thoughts on uh, Sean Murphy Bunty. Do you like uh, the pickup or not? And of course, I will be reading some of your comments as we keep going through the show. Herman, what's up with you? Welcome in. Derek says. Uh, who did we who did Rand sign exactly? Are they good? And no, we don't need Lamar. Well, I you know kind of went through some of those guys. Uh definitely got a couple of guys on the offensive line. Uh definitely got a uh, a linebacker, uh a definitely uh, a linebacker uh since we lost David Long uh to the Miami Dolphins. We got a corner, uh, we got another pass rusher who could start opposite Harold Landry. So I kind of like some of the moves that Rand has made. I think there's some very solid moves, but there are still some moves left to be left to be desired. Um, and then, of course, uh, we definitely got to get it to. Um, We got to get into some things that were definitely talked about as far as, um, you know, also we're going to definitely uh, quickly get into the Kevin Byard uh, situation as well. Uh, that's something we're going to definitely get into in just a moment. Just trying to read through uh, a few of your comments. But, I mean, there's still a lot to be discussed. Uh, see, Daryl's talking about everyone talking about Lamar running, but they forget what he does with his arms. Ray, Ravens never gave him a real receiver. Um, <laughs> Daryl said, not bringing Staley. You mean daily back. I know what you meant, though. Um, 
Let's see, we got Crosio in here. Oh, we got Melinda Aguirre. Uh, I'm excited to talk about D-Hop. We're definitely going to talk about him a little bit later. Orla Struck is here. Uh, we got a name in here that says Lamar's not worth it. Can't believe this has got so much traction, no real news uh, that we are interested. Uh, we're definitely going to find out. Titan Fox, what's going on with you? But I like the signing. Uh, and I see we got somebody on Facebook said, what's up? A name says, we like, I like SMB. Uh, we just loaded up with young talent in the second. Uh, would be amazing if Caleb showed anything this year. It would be nice if he did show something. Um, because, you know, they really, you know, I think this is really going to be Caleb Farley's last chance. You know, because he's had two injury riddled seasons. Um, the first year, you know, the first year he didn't really uh, get a chance to show he was going to get a, you know, he was going to start, uh, against Buffalo and then he ends up tearing up his ACL, kicked him out for the year on that. Then the second year, you know, had some struggles, especially against the commanders. And then he gets benched. Everybody wants to throw him away. And then of course he hurts his back out again for the year. So injury riddle is the problem, uh, with Caleb Farley. Uh, let's see, Ms. Belinda says, uh, still a lot of holes. Lamar Henry would dominate. We'll definitely see about that. Uh, Al Pierce said, when we drafted Molden, we were told he could play slot or even safety. If we do something stupid like cut KB, do we think about moving Molden, Molden to safety? That, I think, is a possibility after they do move on from Kevin Byard. I don't, I, you know, definitely hope it's not this year, next year. Uh, definitely, uh, I want Byard here for a long time, and that's something that, we definitely need to get into right now. So, again, I like the Sean Murphy Bun signing. SMB, come on down. I definitely like that signing. But Kevin Byard, there's been news that the Tennessee Titans approached Kevin Byard about taking a pay cut. And the rumor was put out that if Kevin Byard did not take a pay cut, that they were going to that the Titans were going to cut Kevin Byard. And there was also a rumor out which proved to be false that Kevin Byard had asked for his release. I can tell you from reputable sources, Kevin Byard did not ask for his release. He didn't ask for his release at all. I know Jared put that out there last week that um, he thought from a source that Kevin Byard um, wanted to be released and uh, that was not uh, that was not the fact uh, or anything. So um, they're they're not um, they're not going to release him. I don't think. Now the pay cut. Here's my thing when it comes to the whole pay cut situation with Kevin Byard. The fact of the matter is, Kevin Byard has already restructured his contract twice, if I'm not mistaken. It might be three times, but I know it's at least twice he has restructured for the good and better of the team. You do not ask Kevin Byard to restructure or take a pay cut. I'm sorry. You're just going to have to find another way. You got a certain quarterback that we're number 17 and counts $36 million against your salary cap. Why don't you ask him to take a pay cut? He hasn't exactly been great. Kevin Byard is one of the best safeties in football. All pro. He's carving out a Hall of Fame career. KB needs to stay exactly where he is, and that is a Tennessee Titan. He's the mayor of Murfreesboro. You do not just cut Kevin Byard like he's nothing. You don't even try to trade them because that will hurt your defense. And I know there's been a lot of rumors about Derrick Henry, and I know everybody's up in arms about Derrick Henry. Like, oh, my God, if you trade Derrick Henry, you're going to kill the fan base. We'll have nothing. Offensively, you're right. We wouldn't. But Kevin Byard, you would have nothing. You would have very little defensively as well. I mean, you would have a good defensive line, but you don't just – a guy like Kevin Byer don't just end up cut every day. So the Titans would be – I would be more upset if the Titans cut Kevin Byard 
or trade Kevin Byard and or do not resign Big Jeff over if they trade Derrick Henry. And if you take a look, if you take a look at the salary cap, if you take a look at the salary cap situation for the Tennessee Titans, I can tell you in just a bit what is going on with that. Now, Kevin Byer right now counts $19.6 million against the salary cap. Now, if you cut Kevin Byard, if you cut Kevin Byard, you're only going to be saving around right at 5.9, almost $6 million, but you're going to incur a dead cap hit of $13.6 million. So you're losing more than you're gaining. And we already have some of the most dead money in the NFL. That's like Derrick Henry. $10 million in dead cap. You're only saving $6.2 million if you cut Derrick Henry. Now, you might be able to save, you know, 13 to 19 million. If you could save 13 million if you trade Kevin Byard, which I pray they don't do. And you can save 10 million if you trade Derrick Henry, which again, I don't think they're going to do. So let me get your thoughts on this. Should Kevin Byard take a pay cut? I'm going to say the answer is hell no. He's already sacrificed for the team. A name says, if we if we did cut by, I could see Hooker move into free safety mode into strong safety. Melinda says, pay that man. Well, he's already under contract. He's already under contract. He He's not going anywhere. They're just saying if he could take a pay cut less than the, uh, you know, try to lower the cap hit from $19 million, And his base salary is $13 million, which I would say no. Uh, Steven says KB deserves his money. There's no way he deserves a pay cut. Let's see. Darryl Robinson said we better not move on from Byron. He's the mayor, for God's sakes. Agreed. Rocky said he should not take a pay cut. He's the only consistent player, never misses a game, and he's the leader of the team. And that's another thing. Kevin Byard, in all the years he's been a Titan, has never missed a game. Has not missed one game. Ever. He is, every time they line up, 31 is out there. He has not missed a game yet. Low man says nobody is safe while Rand runs thing. And, and I get it. Rand Carthon has Rand has no allegiance to anybody. He has no allegiance to anybody. So I understand that. Harvey says, I like the DB pickup. We need depth at the position. We can't do another year of picking up people off the street and other teams practice squad. Now that's true too. Facebook, somebody says, why not ask Tannehill to take a pay cut? Exactly. We don't need to cut our main playmakers. That's from Cookie Crutcher. I And I get it. I get it. Kevin Byers should not take a pay cut. No if, ands, or buts about it. And anybody that thinks that he does, you've lost your mind talking about do it for the team, do it for the team. Kevin Byers been doing that. He is the ultimate team player. So don't ask Kevin Byers to take a pay cut. You ask Ryan Tannehill to take a pay cut. Maybe you see about Harold Landry maybe take a little bit of a pay cut. He did miss all or restructure because he did miss all of last year right after he got paid. So that's what I would say on that. And Ty Fox says, if anybody's take a pay cut, it's Tannehill. He should be thankful he's still on the team, much as much as I love what he's done for us. Let's see, D09, what's up? 
So, no, Kevin Myers should not take a pay cut. But let's continue to move on, and let's get into the rumor mill. And I want to talk about this position first. One of the bigger stories is Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is one of the bigger stories uh, right now besides Aaron Rodgers. And that is is that uh, he's on the franchise tag. He's on the non-exclusive franchise tag. And... um, You know, he's on the franchise tag right now at $32 million, non-exclusive. Now, he hasn't signed it yet, but that's what it would be. Um, so the question is, with Lamar, would you be willing to, Now, um, I'm sorry, before I go into that and answer that question, ask the question, it is, there are some rumors out, and again, this is lying season, that Lamar Jackson is ready to move on from the Ravens and is not asking for a fully guaranteed contract. And so, remember, Lamar is on the non-exclusive franchise tag. And what that means exactly in, I forget, we need to put Lamar up on the side. What that means exactly is that Lamar Jackson on the franchise tag will play for $32 million. A team can offer him, a team can offer, put an offer sheet out for Lamar. So, for example, let's say the Tennessee Titans could put out an offer sheet right now, five years, $200 million, if they wanted to. So the Titans could put out a year, could put out five years, $200 million, you know, $100 million guaranteed. They can put that out right now. Lamar could agree to that, could say, you know what? I want to go to Tennessee. We'll agree to that. Then the Ravens would have five days to match that deal. If the Ravens decide to match the deal, bang, he goes back to Baltimore, five years, 200 million, 100 million guaranteed. And the Titans don't lose anything because it's like, hey, they tried. Or if the Ravens don't match that offer, then bang, Lamar Jackson becomes the Tennessee Titans' new starting quarterback. But we would have to give up two first round, the uh, our two first round picks in this year and next year for compensation. Now. Another, and that's the rules of the franchise tag. Also, what could also happen, what happens if Lamar doesn't get picked up during the draft or if it's after the draft and we make a deal? Then you're giving up 24 and 25. And I probably can live with that a little bit more. And again, when I said five years, two hundred million, that was just me spitballing. That was just a spitball um, number. That was just me throwing something out there. I don't know if I would actually do that deal though. So that's what that is. Now I don't know if there's another way you could make another trade, like involve Tannehill or give up some different compensation instead. Now, perhaps that can happen if it is that he decides outside the franchise tag and then get traded. That could happen, too. So, and right now, the rumor, the, I believe it was a sports book 
that mentioned that Lamar, that the Titans have the second best odds now to land Lamar Jackson at plus 400. Second best odds to land him. And some think the Colts or the Vikings are in contention now. They're not really people that say the Titans are interested in Lamar. It's just we're thrown in there as a name because we have our own issues at quarterback. So I'm going to read some of y'all comments, but the question is, and given also, do you want to trade for Lamar Jackson? Put Y for yes, put Y or yes, or you could go in or no. Would you trade for Lamar Jackson? And given also add to the fact that Lamar Jackson, the last few years, has dealt with injury. He's dealt with injury the last few years. Whether it's been some foot sprains, whether it was uh, an MCL strain uh, that kept him out a lot, uh, that kept him out a lot of the regular season last year. Um, also, he missed some time. You know, he missed some time in 2022. He also missed some time in 2021 as well. So, I want to see what y'all think. Would you trade for Lamar Jackson? And Derek Roberts with the super chat, and I appreciate that he said, we don't need Lamar. I don't know who needs to hear this, but we don't. So that was from, that was my super chat from, from, uh, from my guy, Derek. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. The name says, guys, Tanny is not that bad. He is an elite, but his cap hit is only $36 million because J-Rob restructured him as well, making his cap hit as well as buyers so big this year. Tanny is not that bad, true, but he ain't great either. We need elite. We don't need just good. We need great. We need elite, and we ain't got that with him. Lomas, Lomas, Lomas says that's just that's it, just a story. He won't be a Titan. <laughs> a name says I could write a five-page paper of how I don't want Lamar. More like psyching out season. I mean, it is lying season. Facebook says why not go after Cam Newton? <laughs> I'm sorry, whoever put that out. I'm like, um, Cam Newton's old. Cam Newton's old. He's done. He's done. Lamar, type 5 says, Lamar could be an exciting addition, but the risk is too high. He goes down and we're strapped for $200 million over five years on a mistake. No money to rebuild until 2028. Now, right now, the Tennessee Titans are slated to have over $130 million in cap space next year. And they said, didn't he turn down like $130 million guarantee from the Ravens? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Dio and I said, we don't need Lamar. Uh, Melinda says, uh, the first, the two first round picks make it scary. Um, Steven says, despite having a new GM, Ty continue to bring in injured players. The more things change, the more things stay the same. I don't know if I would say that. I mean, um, I mean, I think they brought in some better players. Uh, they brought in some pretty decent players. I don't know if I would say all of that. Uh, A-Dame says in, so he's saying no. Al says no. Cookie says no. New Jersey uh, NJ type fan says yes after the draft. I could see that. D-09 says no, cost too much. I'm not sure we're making a Super Bowl with them. AZ Big says no. Uh, Steven says no. Um, but the reason Rand's going to say yes is because he's still following J-Ross pattern. The more things change, the more things stay the same. I hope he does. I hope, I mean, I'm thinking that's why you got a new general manager to change things and not be the same. Derek says, no, Facebook says Lamar too expensive and injury prone. So he's saying no. 
Let's see. Quinn goes, uh, say, I don't know. Uh, wide receivers outside of Burke's O line issue does seem like a good fit, plus his injuries and our medical staff. I'll pass. Uh, Titan Fox says, No, sign a rookie QB. They will work for peanuts on a rookie contract. Your money to build around them. New Jersey Titan fan says, Jackson and Henry dangerous. So he's on, he's one of the few that says yes. Melinda says, but there aren't any elite quarterbacks to choose from. True. You got to draft one. You got to draft one. And if you're not going to draft this year, you got to draft next year. Um, a name says, Lamar Jackson's career passing and rushing yards per game combined are Tannehill's passing yards per game. Let that sink in. I mean, yep. Yeah. Lamar isn't exactly lighting the world on fire. Um. Melinda said, we got to let it run its course with Tannehill. I mean, unfortunately, that's probably what it seems like. Uh, Al uh, Olderstruck says, Lamar doesn't make it an elite team and a Super Bowl contender, plus it'll cost us two first-round picks. Herman says no uh, and everything. So I see where a lot of people are going, and a lot of people are thinking like me. I'm going to say no. I don't think they need to trade for Lamar. Um Injury history does scare me. That much money invested. And, I mean, what has Lamar done lately? Absolutely nothing. Lamar wants to run more than pass. And the only time he passes is the tight ends. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, we got Chig. Problem is, we don't have Austin Hooper anymore. He just signed a one-year deal with the Raiders today. So, we don't have Austin Hooper either. So, we're going to need a tight end as well. And this is a tight end heavy draft, so I can definitely see that. I know a lot of people want Darnell Washington from Georgia, which, again, I would probably steer away from Georgia players, mainly Georgia offensive linemen. But I would say no uh, to Lamar Jackson, to be honest. No, no, no. I, I would say no to Lamar Jackson uh, on the trade. So that's kind of what I think about that. Again, um, everybody, make sure you smash the like button. Uh, definitely smash the like button. Uh, everybody that's watching, I know we got about 30 of us in here. Please go ahead, everybody, hit that like button for me or, or anything like that. Uh, whether you're on Facebook as well, hit the like button there too. Uh, also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead, um, go ahead and uh, hit that subscribe button and um, and hit the uh, bell so that um. You will be notified. Hit all for notifications. And uh, also, I want to give a shout out. Uh, I definitely want to give a shout out to the Man Hour uh, Sports Network, uh, who I work with. Uh, definitely uh, shout outs to uh, my guy, Mike, and uh, Eugene over there uh, for definitely giving me an opportunity and everything with that. And also, um, I definitely want to... Um, Introduce a new sponsor from the Man Hour Network, uh, and I will be talking more about this. And it is BetStamp, uh, the BetStamp app. Uh, it's www.betstamp.app. Um, is one of the apps, the BetStamp app. Basically, it is like a Google for betting. And so, what they try to do, uh, what they're doing there is uh, they help provide you. Uh, some of the best odds from a whole bunch of different sports books, uh, whether it be Superbooks or BetMGM or uh, Win or Caesars, um, all those apps, FanDuel, DraftKings. They try to provide you some of the best odds and help you as far as line shopping for different lines on games, different lines on you know teams and things like that. Uh, so definitely check it out. Um, definitely join uh, the promo code MANHOUR. Uh, definitely check on that. And I will have more information uh, about that as time goes on. So definitely um, be on the lookout for that uh, as well. Also, I'm going to be putting this picture up uh, on my page very soon. Uh, if you're in Memphis, uh, if you're going to be in Memphis uh, around the 1st of April, um, 
around the 1st of April. Uh, definitely uh, join me. Uh, definitely join the Titans Fan Club of Memphis here. Uh, celebrating 10 years, we're going to have an all-blue gala. Uh, we're having an all-blue all blue gala uh, with free champagne and free food while it lasts. It's twenty dollars a ticket. Um, I'm gonna check and see if there are VIP tables still available. Uh, I'll have that for you uh, next week. There will be um, a cash bar, also a room if you want to smoke uh, and stuff as well. Um, it is semi formal affair uh, with that, but it's an all blue uh, event. So. Um, Definitely, uh, I will put some information out on that as well. So if you're in Memphis, definitely uh, check that out. It will be a um, it is a very it's a very good group of people that I am with. Uh, so I, I definitely would get down with that. So uh, definitely check that out as well. Let's see. I'm gonna read some more comments. And we're gonna keep going. <laughs> Darren Robert says Hollywood Brown left Baltimore because Lamar can't throw the wide receiver. Well, Hollywood Brown got traded and doesn't sound like he's doing all that great in Arizona either. Uh, Melinda says he wants to be a diva right now. There is an and out there, and I know Buck Rising talked about it on his show last night that a representative that is not certified by the NFLPA uh, has been contacting teams uh, trying to get some interest for Lamar. Right now, nobody's really just saying, hey, we're going to give Lamar a shot. Not really much of a market for him at the very moment. Um, so, you know, that is the thing. It's like, you know, they're try you know, this uh, non-certified representative is trying to basically broker up a deal on Lamar's behalf because right now nobody's jumping at, is chopping at the bit to sign him right now because, I mean, the money, you know, the risk of picks, things like that. So that's why they're really not, there's really not a big market for him. Titan South says tank for May or, you know, tank for Caleb. You know, that's definitely there. Um, Derek Roberts says, "What? Uh, thank you for the super chat, Derek. What quarterback do we realistically have a shot at? And that depends. It depends. I have seen um, a lot of drafts where, you know, you have obviously C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young go one and two. And after that is really the Colts at four. What do they do? Do they go Anthony Richardson or Will Levis? And usually one of them goes at four, and the other may go to the Raiders at seven. And then after that, you know, maybe the maybe the Falcons at eight. Uh, if he gets past us at 11, I don't know where they go. I mean, I could see Washington at 16. I could see um, maybe Tampa Bay at 19, possibly, uh, but, I mean, the main two quarterbacks, we probably have a realistic shot of going after are the two quarterbacks I don't want, are the two quarterbacks that probably I don't want and probably y'all don't want either, and that's Will Levis and Anthony Richardson. I'm really not interested in either one of those guys because Will Levis, he looks the part, doesn't play the part. Anthony Richardson, why does he remind me so much of Jamarcus Russell? Looks great in underwear, in the underwear Olympics, but if you go back and look at the film, not so much. So, I mean, unless it's Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud, I would pass. I'd probably take more of a chance on Hendon Hooker than I would Anthony uh, Richardson or Will Levis. To be honest, um, Facebook says Tannehill, D Hop, Henry, new offensive line. Let's go. Um, Dear Robert says his mom is the agent, bad business. I can see. Uh, a name says I can see Levis drop. Uh, could drop to us. Not a fan, but possible. Hooker could be an option around two or three. Uh, Tanner McKee maybe around three or four. Uh, doubt the top three drop, and I agree. I don't think. And I especially don't think C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young are dropping. 
you know, the Panthers don't make that trade unless they're drafting a quarterback. And I think they're going to go with C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young, and then Houston's going to get the other. So that's how I see it. Uh, but before we do uh, wrap everything up, let's talk about, first off, DeAndre Hopkins. And rumor is the Titans are interested. Uh, the Titans are interested in D-Hop. Uh, I know he had a couple of years. You know, he's had um, years where he was injured the year before. And then this past season I had to deal with a um, the uh, six-game suspension. Uh, so, you know, his numbers have dipped down a bit. But, you know, it's still New Hopkins. It's still Duke Hopkins, who is still pretty good. Now, he is at that age of 30, so, I mean, he could be a tad bit past his prime, and we tend to be interested in guys past their prime. So, um, you know, right now there's rumors that the Bills could definitely be in on them uh, and things like that, uh, but the Titans are a team that's listed, and then, of course, the rumors are put out per Albert Breer. And this was, um, let me see if I can share this channel, uh, share this uh, screen. And that is this. Um, so here's the rumor. Dove Kleiman retweeted this out. This is from Albert Breer. The Cardinals will not be able to get their initial at the initial asking price of a second round pick or another at and another asset in a trade for DeAndre Hopkins. He thinks it'll be closer to the Cowboys what they got for Brandon Cooks, a fifth and sixth round pick. So here's my question to all of y'all. The Titans are rumored to be interested in DeAndre Hopkins, which I think is more realistic than Lamar Jackson. But the question is, would you go out to D-Hop? Melinda says, I'm all about picking up D-Hop. And you got to remember, you got to remember, DeAndre Hopkins very familiar with Tim Kelly and Mike Vrabel. Now, I would be interested to see what my guy Ken Moore would have to say when it comes to DeAndre Hopkins because, you know, Ken – even though he's a Titans guy, he definitely is around the Houston Texans a lot. Um, he's around the Houston Texans a lot. So he would know. He would definitely know. And I think he would probably be against DeAndre Hopkins. Derek says, stay away from D-Hop. Uh, all, Melinda says, always hate playing against him. Stephen Crowder says, though D-Hop's familiar with the AFC South, he was once a Houston Texan. Um, and name says, D-Hop is just, is just too expensive and old uh, for what we need right now. And that is without our terrible track record of washed-up quarterbacks or his trade cost when we need, a, we need every pick that we could get. And, and I get that part, too. Uh, I mean, we have had washed-up receivers past their prime. Uh, we have zero look with aging veterans, no matter how good they once were. We have no good luck, rather. You know, Al said, no more veteran wide receivers. I definitely get that. Um, Lou Man says, no. On Facebook, somebody says, D-Hop will be a good pickup. I'm going to say, I, yeah. ooh. If I had a gun to my head, I would say trade for D-Hop. I mean, it would be a low-risk, high-reward, you know. Uh, let me see if I can pull up DeAndre Hopkins' contract. 
and see what let's see i'm gonna try to see if i can get deandre hopkins um contract right now now The only problem is, is that right now he has an out. He has an out now in 2023. Problem is he still has two years left on his deal. He still had, you know, he signed a two-year $54 billion contract. Um, in 2023, he will earn a salary of $19.4 million. Almost 19.5, but he's carrying a cap of 30 million and dead cap of 22. So even if you figure, okay, you know, DeAndre Hopkins ain't worth it, you know, after this year, you know, going into 2024, you know, the cap hit will be 26 million, dead cap of 11. You could save, you could kind of save about 15 million next year. I mean, this year that cap is way too high at 30 million. I mean, something would have to be worked out as far as a contract to lower that number. That contract, a little bit much, honestly. So um, I mean, and so we'll never find out. I mean, it would seem like a good pickup, but that contract scares me uh, quite a bit, to be perfectly honest. Um, so let's see. Hopkins is a volume receiver. I don't think you want to play here unless we pass a lot more than we do now. Well, here's the thing. Tim Kelly is now the offensive coordinator. If anybody knows how to use D-Hop, it's him. So that could be something. And Philip Maddox says, will the Titans use him right? Now, that is the only problem. That is the only problem. The Tennessee Titans don't know how to use players right on offense, unless it's Derrick Henry. They don't know how to use players right. So, OC615 says, just like the others, we never got the high reward. That's true. Al says, wouldn't give up anything above a fourth rounder. I mean, right now, it looks like he won't go for anything more than a fifth rounder. So I'm like, if it's a fifth rounder or less, why not? Why not? And then you could get out of it after this year. I, I would say that. So um, quickly, everybody, give me your thoughts on the fact that the Titans have not picked up any wide receivers. I mean, we just saw that the Browns gave up a second and a third round pick for Elijah Moore. So Elijah Moore got traded from the Jets. Jerry Judy is still out there, uh, possibly for trade as well. And um, I mean, I think Jerry Judy is younger. You know, Jerry Judy is younger, and I think he would be a better option. Um, but I think the Broncos want a little bit too much. Um, they're saying the price tag is a first round pick or a high second and a player, which I just don't know if the Broncos are going to get that, uh, for him. But the fact that the Titans have not picked up any wide receivers is a little bit stupid in my opinion. So, um, I mean, I I think they're very focused on either making a trade for somebody or they're going to draft receivers. And Ohio State just had their pro day today and a huge contingent of Titans uh, personnel were there. Vrabel was there. Rand Carthon was there. Assistant General Manager Chad Brinker was there. Uh, Tim Kelly was there. 
We don't know who the other three people were that were there as well, but pretty decent contingent of Titan fan of Titan personnel were at um Ohio State's Pro Day, and they weren't just there checking out Paris Johnson. They were there checking out, you know, I mean, of course, CJ Stroud, Paris Johnson Jr., Jackson Smith and Jigba, um, Dewan Jones. Luke Wilper of uh, the center. Uh, so they were checking all those people out. And so I think a lot of people probably thinking, well, if you're not going to draft an offensive line, but we're going to go receiver, maybe we should really take a serious look at Jackson Smith and Jigba. My question is, he's dealt with injury as well this past season. I mean, are we sure we want to go that route again? Um, but we'll definitely find out because I mean, from all from what I've from what's been going on, sound like Jackson Smith and Jigba look pretty good today. Uh, Titan Fox says, I heard Marvin Harrison Jr. was gonna be throwing no Marvin Harrison Jr. was catching passes from CJ Stroud, although he's not eligible for the draft this year. But people get a you know, get an early look at him. For next year, he is definitely available next year uh, for the draft. So Marvin Harrison Jr. would be a nice pickup next season. No doubt about that. But I don't like the fact that they have not tried to pick up any wide receivers. And that crop has pretty much run dry. Moore gets traded. Miko Harbin got signed by the Jets uh, today. And so it's not looking too hot right now for the Tennessee Titans on the wide receiver front. Now, let's wrap this up with one of the most, with the funniest thing I ever saw in the news. Monty Austin Ford, the new general manager of the Arizona Cardinals, formerly Titans director of player personnel, thought it was a good idea to sign Dennis the Dud Daily. And they did. It is official. They signed, the Arizona Cardinals signed the Dud, Dennis Daly, to a two-year deal. We don't know what the details of the money is, but the fact that it was two years, probably an opt-out after this year, but still, why in the world would anybody sign this guy to a contract? Why would anybody even think to sign this fool? So Monty Ossifor already looking like an idiot. So we might have dodged a bullet giving him a shot at the GM job. No offense to Monty. He could probably help us out with a trade with D-Hop. Or maybe for the number three pick if Young or Stroud is available. Because you never know how the draft is going to go. And Herman said, I agree. I think they got a trade either coming or they're going to draft. Now, I posted that on Twitter, and an Arizona Cardinal fan said, yeah, he might be the third or fourth tackle on the team behind some other guys. And I, and I tweeted back, I said, you better pray he never has to see action. Because if he does, Le- Kyler Murray is going to be running for his life. All the struck says, run for your life, Murray. <laughs> OC says, the Cardinals are pissed at Colin Murray. Tyvon says, I have a feeling alcohol was involved. Ah, I mean, I feel for Arizona. A lot of tight fans have just bashed Arizona for this and just said, you know, just, I mean, I'm celebrating too. Thank God he ain't going to be in a Titans uniform uh going forward thank god for that amen arizona you can have them good luck so that was hilarious when i saw the deal when i saw that the dud dennis daly got signed by the arizona cardinals that was funny i was like are you kidding me
Like, just to prove I'm not crazy, that I wasn't joking, here it is. The Dud Dennis Daily. Two-year con two-year contract. Dennis the Dud Daily to the Arizona Cardinals. How dumb does Body Austin Ford have to be? Did you not experience that here? So, Kyler Murray, good luck, sir. Good luck on that. You'll be running for your life a lot. So, everybody, I think that's going to just about do it for tonight's show. Uh, probably starting in the next few weeks, I'll be starting to do some draft breakdowns. Uh, I'm definitely going to do a show next week, uh, trying to get some ladies to join me uh, as we celebrate the end of Women's History Month. Uh, definitely want to get uh, some ladies. I may have a couple uh, lined up, uh, especially those in the media. Uh, I may even bring on a young lady who I met on uh, Twitter, even though she's a Colts. Um, she does some stuff for the Colts, but it's the fact that we hit it off pretty good as friends. And, you know, um, um, you know, um, acquaintances that I may try to bring her on just to kind of celebrate women in sports media. So that's something that I'm definitely thinking about doing uh, next week. So um, everybody, again, I want to say uh, thank you to everybody for tuning into the show. I'm your man, Blue Enforcer, a.k.a. The Truth. Again, uh, hit that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel. And also, um, you know, download on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google, and Apple Podcasts uh, if you haven't already. And uh, I thank y'all for tuning into the show. I'm your man, Chris, a.k.a. Blue Enforcer. And uh, y'all have a very good rest of the night. Thank you. Thank you, Titan Fox. Uh, Super Chats are appreciated. Of course, Cash Apps are appreciated as well. Uh, thank y'all. Y'all have a good night and tighten up because that's all we know how to do. <laughs>